the pandemic and oh. people wanting to feel good uh, while they're purchasing. So the pandemic it produced three three buying behaviors with mm-hmm. the consumers. Mm-hmm. And the first one I want to like break down or like go over is impulse buying. Impulse buying is been there than that. Has been the biggest thing ever in like retail. Mm. But ever since ever since the pandemic it's become an even bigger thing online. Mm. And especially the this like fucking silly ass tactic that they do where it's like, you know when you go to checkout mm. and it goes like you're three dollars point six five for away from free shipping. Mm. Add this till like, I get free shipping. Mm-hmm. And the the actual thing you're buying is like more than fucking three dollars. You, yeah. you end up buying like something that's fifteen dollars. Yeah. You end up paying for it and the shipping. Uh. So how do you feel about impulse buying? Actually, no, fuck that. During the pandemic, had you had like a crazy spending spree? Um, hmm. Good question. Um, honestly, not really. But I did, lol, I did rent, but this was like pre-planned. This is very, I want to say considered, but yeah. I don't know. Um, I did, so back then I was like really into spin classes and yeah. like, and I rented a spin bike from the spin studio. Yeah. So like I had a spin bike yeah. in my living room yeah. and I would just be like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like in my living room, my yeah. neighbors looking in must have thought that I was like nuts. No, but I was fully like a hands- hamster on a wheel, like in yeah. in my apartment. Um, yeah, the first two weeks was so funny though. Yeah. Like I was so like nervous about how contagious COVID nineteen yeah, yeah. was. Yeah, and so I was just like, because it's an apartment complex yeah. and. Like, we all have, like, a shared trash area. Yeah. And so I was just... I was avoiding going down no. to the trash for two weeks. Because I was so scared to get COVID. <laughs> because I was alone here in this country without yeah. my family. And my flatmate had gone back to Dunedin. Yeah. So it was just me. And I was just like... I can't catch you. I can't and I was just you. like, guys, if you don't hear me... I'm going to text you all every day. <laughs> if you don't hear me for two days, it means I'm dead from COVID. Damn. Like... God, Because I'm here alone. Yeah. But, yeah, I was just like scared as fuck but yeah. um yeah i think like back then like definitely a lot of people were buying like a lot of random shit because like have you heard of the lipstick effect the lipstick effect yeah no go so the lipstick effect is like a economics principle economics marketing yeah either or um and i remember writing about it during um university but basically it's about how like during times of recession and economic trouble yeah. um people can't afford the big stuff Mm. so they start buying all the small small pleasures so like they call it the lipstick effect because like it was like during the recession um back in the day when the study was made like cosmetic sales went up yeah and um yeah i think the same also went for um like in covid like i used to work in e-commerce yeah and covid was quite honestly the best time for e-commerce for business yeah 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 like I think and it like was like a 30%. Yeah, it was like a 40%, 35, no, 30 to 40%. Um, yeah, that's what my client said. Yeah. 30 to 40% increase in their overall sales. Yeah. Crazy. And I was just like, what crazy. the fuck? That's so crazy. And like, that's across all industries, which was the crazy part. And like, just the, the other point, like, uh, I want to go over real quick is like, mid pandemic, everybody like had to kind of sit with themselves and look mm-hmm. in the mirror and go, like, I actually need to take care of myself a bit more. Yeah. And it just created this, like, I don't know, I guess, like, weird environment of, like, people wanting to buy wellness products Mm. before, like, in the hopes that they would get well themselves. Mm. Like, I remember, like, I think one of my brothers, they bought, like, some, like, fucking vitamin gummies or some shit like that. And he was Mm. like, nah, I'm changing my life. It's mid-lockdown. Like, by the time lockdown's over, I'm going to be a different man. Yeah. But it's like, those gummies are not going to help you, like get to that, like, ideal version of yourself. Yeah. But yeah. I think in a lot of consumers' minds, it's that, like, oh, buying it is, like, half the battle. Mm. But, and I think that businesses prey on that a little bit. Mm. That it's like, uh, you want to get better? You can't without these, like, fucking vitamin D gummies right here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I think a lot of, like, small stuff went off during, during COVID. Like, just, I feel like a lot of businesses yeah. just took off during COVID. Yeah. Like, wasn't... But the attention seeker was literally like started yeah. around that era too. It's a COVID baby. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, it's crazy to think that because like um, f- 
for me personally, like, because I had more time to sit with myself and, like, I was literally not really talking to anyone. Yeah. Um, like, I had a lot of time to just kind of set myself into a routine. And I think, low-key, COVID was the best thing for me mentally and my mental well-being. Yeah. Because, like, I ended up, like, speaking to a therapist virtually, like, yeah. one-on-one every, every, yeah. every week. And, like, yeah. um, I also, like, started journaling, which mm. was wild. Yeah. Um, but yeah it's it's definitely it definitely forced people to sit with themselves and yeah. just kind of figure out what they want like what was it the <clears throat> the rise the great resignation yeah happened yes. afterwards yes and people were people left the matrix yes people basically people plugged out plugged out of the matrix yeah 